Hello and welcome to another video from Double Rail. In this video, we're going to show you how you can get this entire train set set up and working in a temporary environment with like your kitchen floor or a dining room with a hard floors or something like that. And then when you're done, how to package it all the way nice and neatly into this IKEA container until next time you want to use it. So what you're going to need is a train set, some blue tack, and a Samala IKEA container. So, first off, we're going to take a look at this uh, Hornby GWR high speed train set. This currently on um, direct from Hornby is £157.99. Um, there's also a Freightliner one that gives you the same kind of track, I think with uh, a, a diesel locomotive and some freight wagons, and it's around the same price, it might be around £159 or so. These train sets um, start off at £79. The £79 ones and £99 ones just come with the oval of track. Uh, this comes with the oval of track and track pack A, and we'll explain that later on. So what we're going to do in this video is basically explain what's in the train set box, um, how to go about setting it up, how to test it, problems you might have, and then how to pack it away until the next time you want to use it into this container here. All right, so let's get started. All right, let's start with what comes in the box. So first up, you get a left-hand point, and you know this is a left-hand point because you have the part that goes straight here, and then the left-hand branch goes off to the left. If it was a right-hand point, it would be branching off to the right instead. So you know this is a left-hand point, and these points work with a manual uh, switch. So if you see here, uh, when it's all the way over to the left, it goes straight, and then when you move it off to the to the right here, um, this blade moves away and it causes the, the train to go around this way instead, off to the left, and it works manually. Now there's also a little hole in there, and um, that is for uh, putting a point motor in if you have a more permanent layout, but that's not really of any importance today. Um, it comes with these double uh, curve tracks, now, if you look at the back of the track here, um, it might be difficult to see in the light here, but it has a OR number. This one's OR606, and it has Hornby made in China. And so that tells you what type of piece of track it is. Um, these are, I think, second radius curves. And so it comes with eight of these. Uh, four of them are for the left-hand side, and four of them are for the right-hand side. It comes with... Um, two of these uh, regular straights. It comes with two uh, double straights, which are basically uh, two of those put together. It comes with the um, power track a, and a curve for the points. And I think that's a, um, as on the back here, it is um, or 606. Now this here is the um, power track. The power controller uh, has a set of pins that go in there. You basically push it down and plug it in and it clicks into place. And this is the power controller. And there's a power pack um, that provides AC uh, power into the power controller and then the power controller converts that to DC. You have um, the two HST power cars. Only one of them is powered and it's the heavier one. And then you get a coach. And then here you have a buffer. So to set this up, you're gonna need a space that's about uh, 1600 millimeters by 1180 and um, you're gonna want some blue tack and you're gonna want a, a hard floor so here I'm in the basement my kids have an area where they play ice hockey and can practice it and so on so you can do this on any kind of hardwood floor so linoleum uh, vinyl tile hardwood floor whatever you have so like a kitchen is a good place to do it and um, I wouldn't recommend doing it on a table just because if the train falls off the track it will fall a couple of feet and potentially break so first time you do this you want to limit the distance the train could potentially fall uh, just so you get the hang of it and the blue tack is to basically stick the track uh, to the floor so that it doesn't move around as the train goes around otherwise depending on how um, slippery the surface is on your in your room it can cause the train to to move around uh, or move, cause the track to move around as the train moves. So what we're going to do today is show you guys how to build the track, 
how to put it together and hopefully you'll find it useful. All right, so what I've done is I've moved everything but the track uh, into the base of the box. And we're gonna set that aside because we don't need that right now. And what you wanna look at is on the main part of the box, there's a uh, image here that shows you how the track is set up. And the way you can see here on the left-hand side, you have four of the large curves. On the right-hand side, you have four of the large curves. Here you can have the three smaller tracks. So one of these is gonna be the power track, and then you have the two other straight tracks on the other side. The set of points is up here, the smaller curve, a double track and a double track. And so this is gonna basically be your guide. Um, you could use the track mat. The problem with using the track mat, especially if it's temporary, is it kind of folds and it's not always even because the way it's been folded up in the box. Plus you don't want to really blue tack the track to it because you'll end up pulling off the, the kind of finished surface on it. So this is better to use later on if you've got a board or something like that you plan on using. Um, but for today, we're gonna not use the track mat. We're just gonna blue tack down the track directly. However, before you blue tack down the track, you want to go and set it up and make sure that it works before you go and start putting blue tack on it and stuff. So the first thing we're going to do is take the power track and you want the power track with the power part of it facing outwards because that's where your controller is going to do. You could potentially put it inwards but the problem with that is then you have to run cables under the track and it can sometimes be uneven. Um, now one of the advantages of having the track on the inside is your kid could sit in the middle and watch the train go around to wherever they tend to like knock things over and stuff so just better to have it on the outside and encourage your child or adult whoever's using it to to be on the outside of it so what we're going to do is very simply connect the tracks now the tracks already have these rail joiners or fish plates on them as you see there there's one on one side and none on the other and that's because the other side or on the other piece of track has it and all you do is just line it up now if you look at the track there's a part of the rail on the bottom is flat and that kind of lines up with the uh, the flat part on the fish plate or rail joiner and so what we're going to do is just simply angle it slightly till you feel it catch underneath it like so and then just push it together now if you've done it correctly it'll be flat so you can run your finger over it and it feels perfectly flat what typically happens is you'll get one of them and not the other and so what you'll see is they'll sit over like that. And you can see it's not flat and you can move it around as it hasn't caught. Um, don't worry if you, if you do that, just pull them apart. Sometimes you might have to wiggle them to get them into place, but usually it works pretty well. So that's our first two bits of track there. So we're gonna take the other straight track and do the same thing on the other side here. Like so. I'm gonna make sure it lines up. And it's flat, it's not coming apart, it's all good. So next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna set that down like so. And that's the first part built. And so if we look here at our little layout part, we've done this bit here, and now we're gonna do the other bit on the other side. So to do the other bit on the other side, you're gonna take the points, and you're gonna take the double track, and you're just going to connect those together like so pretty easy and then the next thing you're going to do is take this smaller curved track and it goes this way you could, you could do it this way if you want or you could do it this way so the box has us doing it this way but if you do it the other way it also creates kind of more of a, a V so if you have more space that's something different you could try but for today we're just going to follow the box instructions and clip that in place like so it's all good and then finally we're going to take this last part and put it on there like so double check that it's all good it's nice and flat it's all smooth push it together and we're good to go so now what we're going to do is put that over on the other side and do whatever you want with it except all right so now we have our two bits of track now this is not how far apart it's going to be it's going to be much further apart 
Um, but you'll see that in just a moment. So what we're going to do next is we're going to assemble the uh, curved sections in two at a time. So same deal, you just take two sections, put it together like so. Sometimes it'll go together pretty easily and sometimes it won't. Ah. I'm going to move this box out of the way. And we're just going to not really connect it, but just kind of loosely line it up so you have an idea what it's going to look like and how much space you need. And then we're going to take the next one and do exactly the same thing. So we uh, ignore my foot there. Um, you know, connect it up. Oops, see, I did it wrong there. It connected together like so. It's good, nice and flat. And then we put it in place. So now we can have a better idea of where this is going to end up. So I'm going to move this out of the way. Just move this into position. Again, it's not hooked up. You just want to kind of make sure you have enough room. And again, you could be doing this in the kitchen, dining room, wherever you have room. Now what you might want to do before you put this down, you might want to sweep the floor. Um, just to make sure that there's no dirt or food or if you're using the kitchen or anything like that um, before you put it in place. And so what we're gonna do is just do the next one. Again, this is a little trickier to do it on camera this way, but um, let's see, I did it wrong there. Let's just angle it. Yeah, there you go, see, now it's nice and flat. I put that layer like so and then finally we take the last part and again just connect it up like so and then we'll put that in place right there that'll give you an idea of how it's going to look so what we're going to do next is we're going to go around to each one of these joints and just uh, connect them up and i'll show you how to all right, so we're here at the first join. You're just going to hold this in place, angle this track up, connect it up like so, and we're good. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna move around to the two uh, circles on the left-hand side. All right, so here we have the two curves here on the left-hand side. So what we're gonna do is just angle it up and make sure it's correct, flat, it's good. So now we're gonna go over to where the points are. All right, so here we are with the points. Again, this is a, a free section. It's not connected to anything else. You're just going to line it up on both sides here. Connect it up, make sure it's flat, and we're good to go. So next, we're gonna go down here to the uh, other end of it and wire it up, to, or connect it up to the um, other curve. So in terms of the box here, we're on this section here. So we've already hooked it up here, here, and here. And so now we're hooking it up here. So we hooked it up here first, then we hooked it up here, then we hooked it up here, and now we're hooking it up here. So again, this is the section that's kind of connected to everything. So we can lift this one up a little bit, get a good angle on it, and push it together. Run our fingers over it to make sure that it's flat. And now we're just gonna go around to the other one. All right, so now we're connecting up the right-hand side of the curves, and so we're gonna connect this. Again, you just wanna tilt the one that's free, and make sure you get it under. See, that's not right. There you go. Yep, still not right. There you go. And some of these can be quite stubborn. Like so, there you go, got it right that time. So it's good to go. Now what we're gonna do is connect up the final part. All right, so here's the final part. And what we're gonna do is just uh, connect this up and run our finger over it and it's good to go. So now what you need to do next is just go back and check each of those connections that you made and make sure none of them have uh, come apart. If I uh, move the camera down here a little bit, I don't know how easy you can see, but some of them, like they're just a little, little bit misaligned and so you just wanna pull the track together to straighten it out to make sure it's correct. So you just do that all the way around the track and you verified everything and next to hook up the power. All right, so we've got all the track uh, connected together. And so the next step is to connect the uh, 
Harvey power controller. And the Harvey power controller just looks like this. This is just a regular analog controller. Now there's a couple of things you should be aware of this. There's a direction switch which goes uh, forwards or backwards. Now an interesting thing with this is that you can't move the switch unless it's at zero. So if it's at zero, I can move it back and forth. But if I move it up a little bit, it's no longer physically able to move it. So don't try to force it. If it doesn't move, it means it's just not back at the zero position. And this is a physical thing, so sometimes these can be a bit tricky and a bit sticky. You want to make sure it's all the way back and then you can move it back and forth. In terms of the power connection, there are these uh, two prongs and they basically go into this and it will click in place. So I'm going to move the camera a little bit closer and show you how that works. Alright, so to get this to work, you might want to kind of bend yourself down a little bit to the eye level and then there's two holes here just line them up and then you line them up and then push down on this and then it clicks into place so just to show you again you, you push down on these two things so you push down with it lined up and then it clicks into place and you let go of those and you're good to go All right, so on the back of the Hornby power controller, there are these uncontrolled accessories. This is for lights and stuff. Don't worry about that for now. Now there's a high-low switch, which basically makes the train run a little bit slower. And then there's the DC um, power connector that you put in there. So what I would highly re recommend you do, especially if this is your first ever train set, is just switch that over to low. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your Hornby power pack, see here this is the one for the UK, and on the other end, without this plugged in, don't plug this into the mains yet, so what you're going to do is you're going to take this end and you're going to plug it right in there, make sure it clicks in place and then you're good. Then what you're going to do is you're going to take this and plug it into the mains. Now don't put any trains on there, so what we're going to do is we're going to check to make sure the power controller works before we do anything else. All right. So we've got the thing plugged in, and so what you're going to do is you're going to watch this LED right here, and with nothing else on, and with the power on to the controller, you're going to smooth this up until you see the power LED come on. And then as you move it higher, it should get brighter. So as you move it down further, it'll get dimmer and go off, and then as you move it higher, it'll get brighter. And this just tells you that the power controller is most likely working the way you expect. So the next thing to do is we're going to put the power car on here and I'm going to show you how to figure out which one is the power car in this set. Now if you got a Freightliner set or you got one of the Santa sets or something like that, it, it, it's going to be the train, right? So it's pretty straightforward. With the HST set, you've got two power cars. One of them is powered, one of them is not. So I'll show you how to figure out which one is which. All right, so we've got these two um, pretty much identical HST power cars here. And so one of them has number uh, 43 016 and the other one has a number 43015 sorry uh, 43005 so the way you tell which one is which is it's going to be the heavier one is the power car it has the motor in it so you lift this one up you lift the other one up and this one is noticeably heavier it's probably at least twice as heavy so I know that this one's the power car so 43016 is the dummy car so we're going to set that aside and 43005 is the power car. Now another way to tell it's the power car is if you flip it over, and it's probably a little hard to tell because of the lighting in here, but there is a kind of rubber tire on this particular um, prior locomotive. That's called a traction tire. Now it's an older technology because this is like an older train um, design. And so this design is from the 80s, maybe late 70s. And so this traction tire is designed to give it um, kind of more traction, stop it from uh, spinning and so on, because it doesn't have quite as much weight. So this is okay. At some point these will do wear out and you might have to replace them. Um, and those are a spare you can, you can buy off of Hornby's website. However, what it does mean is that this thing is a lot more difficult to put on the track um, because you can't really use the re-railer. Now the re-railer is uh, this thing here. And the idea behind re-railer is you, you put it on the track, line it up, and you just push the train onto the track, and it gets on there. Now, unfortunately, with the um, traction tire, it causes too much friction. That's not really good. 
Okay, so to put it on the track, you're going to pick it up um, by the back here, or the center, and you can see I'm kind of grasping it in the middle, and you're just going to kind of eyeball it onto the track, and then you're going to take your thumb and your middle finger on the front boogie, and just sort of pick it up and feel around until you can see that both wheels are on the track, and then you should be able to move it back and forth, and it should be aligned, and you're going to do the same thing with the back wheel so you're gonna make sure it's visibly on there now you can see what's happening if I move the front wheels this thing's gonna to want to come off because of that traction tire so once it looks like it's good and it's on there you are good to try the train out so what we're gonna do is we're gonna apply power and make sure that it goes around the track a few times and then we're gonna go and blue tack down the track because if we don't it's just gonna kind of shimmy around on the surface here and eventually you'll end up with uh, the track will have moved a couple of feet this way or that way or it'll have come undone in certain sections because one of the, the tracks has been pushed a little bit too far um, so the blue tack will help keep it in place okay so we're getting ready to start the train but before we do we want to make sure that these points are running straight so if you see here this is a left hand point we want the bar to be thrown to the left so that this is straight and what's going to happen is the train will now run straight across here. If we don't do that, what's going to happen is it's going to go down the end here and run off the end of the track. Okay, so we've checked the points to make sure they're set in the correct direction. We've already done the test of the track without the train on it to make sure the power controller works. We've got this set in the correct direction and so what we're going to do now is just sit here and turn the knob a little bit until the light comes on. Now you might be able to hear that kind of humming noise, that's perfectly normal, but you don't want to leave it there for long. And then we're just going to apply a little bit more power until it's about halfway. And then the train's going to run like so. And you see this one has lights, and so it's uh, kind of nice for the kids and so on. All right. So we're going to let this thing run around for a couple of minutes, make sure that there's no, no problems. And then once it's run for a couple of minutes, we're going to bring it to a stop and then uh, check it in the other direction just to make sure that there's no issues with it. All right, so it's been running for about four or five minutes. So I'm going to bring it to a stop here. And then what I'm going to do is flick the direction over. So make sure it's all the way to the off before you can switch it. And then I'm going to flip it around the other way and send it that way. It's pretty simple. So we're going to let this run backwards for a couple of minutes and then we're going to put the whole train on. So I'll see you in a few minutes. All right. So the train's been running for a couple of minutes and it's working pretty well and I've got a good handle on the controls now. So what you can do is on the back here, you can flip this from low to high. And then by doing that, and I'll show you real quick what will happen. When it flipped onto high now, the train's gonna go a lot faster. And for kids, this might be more of a fun factor, but it's a lot more responsive. It's a little bit more difficult to control. But you're going to probably want to have it on high if you add a lot of um, coaches or wagons and stuff to it. So I'm going to bring it to a stop here and I'm going to explain to you how to connect up the remaining uh, coaches and so on. Alright, so the set comes with a Mach 3 coach and now with this GWR Castle set you, you might see um, four of these and a TGS coach. So that would be kind of like a, a typical uh, train you would see. and. Um, what you do is just put it on the track, same way, just two fingers till you see that it, the wheels are on the track, and you should be able to move it back and forth without any problems. Now, if it's not on there correctly, you'll hear this kind of clicking noise, and that's the wheels hitting the sleepers, and the sleepers are those little black things um, that are on the track there. So when it's smooth, it'll be a lot more smoother. Now, you see here, this thing, this little hook is called a tension lock, and I'll show you tension hook coupling, and um, if you look here, there's a, 
kind of a hook at the bottom and when you move this hook up or this little lever up at the bottom it raises the hook up to un unhook it all right so i'm like make it a little bit easier so you can see if i raise the little bottom part up it lifts that up to unhook it now when you connect the two together you got to raise them both up to unhook them but to connect them together you just literally just push them right and so i'm going to move the train up a little bit and i'll do the same thing again with this so you just start with the back line it up lift up the front line it up with the wheels obviously you can see there it's not right so i gotta fix that okay so it's good now and all we're gonna do is just slowly i'm gonna do is move the camera a little closer so all i'm gonna do is hold this one and then push this one together and you can hear it click and just connect together like that now we're good to go So you can see with this train set, there's lights here on the front, but there's no lights on the back. So what Hornby have done is they've just taken their old 1970s, 1980s train set, put a new motor into it, and added the uh, front lighting to it with LEDs. But there's no um, red lighting on the back uh, like you'd have with the more premium model. But uh, that's something you could retrofit if you want later on. Um, but for this train set and for the price, it's, um, it's not bad at all. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this run for a couple of minutes like this just to make sure that it works. And then what we'll do is we'll show you how to use the blue tack, or in my case, the white tack, um, just to stick down parts of the track so it doesn't move. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to take the train off the track. Now, what you can do is you can use this part of the re-railer uh, to unhook it. So if you very carefully get it in between both of those hooks and then lift up if you can get them both and then slide the train out of the way now i've got it unhooked and so and once you have the power card removed this moves a lot more freer do the same thing again just kind of hook it up underneath push both up move the other one off out of the way and they'll both lift off the track all right so we've got that done so what we need to do next is we're going to go and we're going to put a small bit of blue tack. And when I say small, I mean just a small tiny piece like this. And what you're going to do is you're going to go put it basically under each of the joins of the track. Um, so where we join the track, we're going to put a bit of blue tack. And that's basically it. It's, it's pretty straightforward. So we're going to do that and you can see the train go around with the blue tack on it. Now what you want to be careful with. So you want to make sure that you don't use too much. If you use too much, you can have some stick up, might catch the track or something like that. You want to put it dead center in the uh, in the sleeper part and uh, where the join is. And it's pretty straightforward. Now one thing that is a bit tricky is once you put it, start to put it down, especially when it's on a, a, a sticky floor, um, you, you're gonna, or it's on a, not sticky, but you know, it's kind of slippery or, or, or kind of glossy kind of floor like this. Um, what you're going to have is, when you get to this last part, you're going to have to be very careful to just lift it up very gently and kind of wedge it under. I found you can use the re-wheeler to wedge the thing under there and kind of push it down as well. So let me go work on that and uh, we'll show you me doing it on a couple of places and then it's uh, pretty straightforward. So I've got the uh, piece of blue tuck here. I'm just going to lift the track up. It doesn't really matter which side you get it on. I'm just going to line it up like that and then push down on it and it's pretty, pretty much that simple and we'll show you the next one all right so here we are at the join between the two curves we're just going to slide that under there line it up a little bit and then just push down on it simple as that now i'm going to keep going around and do that with the rest of it and give you an idea of how it works all right so i've got all the blue tack down so what i'm going to do next is just put the train back on the track and then um we're going to have some fun with it Obviously, before you connect them, just check to make sure it's freewheeling and push it along. And then last but not least, um, put the power car front bogey on first because of that traction tire. And then a rear bogey. And then push this part on. And now we're good to go. So, I'm going to take the power controller and set it off.
And I don't know if you can tell, but the track isn't really moving anymore because of the blue tack. And you can leave this run for hours in your kitchen or whatnot, and you're good to go. And good. Endless hours of fun. All right, so you've got the train set uh, built, you're having fun with it. What can you do next? Well, these uh, track extension packs, uh, we already have A with this particular set. If you've got some of the cheaper sets that are 79 pounds, 99 pounds, um, you'd have to buy the uh, track pack A. But um, for us, we would buy the track pack B, and you can see there, it shows you what you get in yellow. So to get a full inside loop, you'd need track pack B and track pack C. Um, track pack D gives you the level crossing and an inner part. And then track pack E uh, is optional. Um, you may want to get it, you may not. It, it's going to add a little bit of extra width, as you can see there on the outside uh, of the track. And so that really is up to you um, how you want to go about doing it. It also has a nice diagram inside explaining all the different types of track uh, geometry that they do as well. Um, so that's basically it. Uh, there's some accessories like buildings you can get, like platforms and other kind of interesting things you can get for stations and they have a whole range of different things. You can buy stuff from other uh, manufacturers as well. So you might want to buy some additional trains. That's easy to do as well. Uh, you just have to make sure that they're DCC ready or analog. Um, the system that comes with this train set and with a lot of the train sets from Hornby are uh, just regular analog. Um, now DCC is called Digital Command Control and what way that works is it's a slightly different power system. Uh, there's a chip that goes into the train and the chip has a number assigned to it and then as uh, signals are passed from the controller to the rail um, to that specific train number and then basically whatever the command is in that piece of information the train then does so for example it might be to turn the lights on to start moving to slow down speed up stop and, and so on on a layout this size you're really not going to need dcc you're not going to get much play value out of it and all you're going to do is have an added expense uh, and dcc can be a bit temperamental especially with a, a cheaper controller so um, you're better off just sticking with a DC until you played around with it and then make a decision later. You can always retrofit the trains with DCC uh, by adding the chip if you want to at a future date. So aside from the track packs, uh, something that you're definitely going to want to buy is a, a track cleaning eraser now or rubber. And now you can buy them from Hornby, but the Hornby ones aren't very good. Uh, you're better off going to a you know model train, you know hobby shop or train shop, train model shop or um, somewhere like Hatton's or uh, Rails of Sheffield or Cornell Model Center and just ordering a Pico one. Uh, the Pico ones are a lot better and I'll, I'll do a video on that uh, at a future date. So um, other than that you can buy other trains. Uh, this track is code 100 and um, any kind of HOO scale train is going to work on it. If you want to get a HO scale train from a different country, you could do that. You want an American one or German one or French one. Um, or you might want to just add to this so you can buy additional Mach 3 coaches from Hornby uh, or any other model shop. But you can also get them second hand. Uh, if you want to make this a realistic looking train, you would probably want what's called a TGS and then three or, uh, or three other uh, of these TS coaches. So. Um, Yes, yeah, so that's basically it. So what I'm going to show you next is how to just basically dismantle it and get it into the IKEA container so it's easy to store. So when you're done playing with it, um, just to disconnect the power, you would uh, first of all take the train off. So we'll take our re-railer real quick and uh, unhook the train. We'll move this over, put it under there and unhook the train like so. And we we'll set the re-railer aside, push the two things down, unplug the power. And then what you're going to do is you're going to just disconnect the track. So if you disconnect the track, even though it's blue tack down, it should pop pretty easily. Uh, you're going to start with the power section here and just wiggle it out. And then you have the track, set that aside, and just work your way around the whole thing. I'm not going to film the whole dismantling of this, but basically going to undo all the track, and then I'll show you how to package it away in the box. All right, so you can see now I've got the track all uh, all ready to go so we've got back in the left hand and right hand uh, curves I've taken all the blue tack off of it and it's all ready to go so now let's grab the IKEA container and show you how to package it away 
All right, so the container I'm using is the Samula one. It's a 401.029.78, and I don't think it has, oh it is. It's a 39 by 28 by 14 centimeters. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna set that aside like so. You can see it's got four uh, squares there in the corner. Uh, one, two, three, four. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take one set of the curves, so this is our my uh, set of four curves here. I'm just gonna put them like in this inverse kind of uh, direction. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick up the uh, three bits of track here and put them in the center with the uh, power one and that one right there. And then I get the set of points and set them. Actually, I'm gonna put the curve track there and a set of points like so. And then what we do is we grab the other set and just put them in the opposite corner like so. Now you can see there, it's a little bit imbalanced. So what I typically will do is take something like the track here and maybe stack it so that it provides more of a stable sort of setup. And then you can take the revealer, for example, and put it under there to also provide it some stability. And then what I typically do is you take the two straight tracks and you can put that in there like so. I left a bit of blue tack on it, so take that off. And it goes in there pretty neatly. Now what I'm gonna do is take the uh, train controller and just put it there in the center. Take the uh, power pack and it too will fit quite nicely in there. And then what we do is we take the instructions, the track mat, and all the extra paperwork that came with it, and just set that on top like so. Looks pretty well. And then you can take your coach, your power car, and your other power car like so. And then have this other little mat like that. And then take the lid, and your whole train set is all packed away. Now, if you buy other trains, you can just buy another one of these containers. They also have smaller ones and they're stackable. And you can put this off in a corner of a room or in a closet or something like that until the next time you want to break it up. So it's pretty simple. It's a great way to uh, have a temporary layout, get your trains running, get to try out the hobby without having too much expense or needing any kind of space. And then you can break this out anytime you want to play trains. Well, I hope you guys found this useful. If you have any questions or you run into any problems, please feel free to put it in the comments and we'll try to help you. And if you found this video useful, please like it and hit the subscribe button. Um, now, if you want to learn how to go from a train set over to a layout, uh, stay tuned and I'll have some videos on that in the new year. All right, so that's it for today. Hope you guys enjoyed it and until next time.